Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, this past week, this crate showed up out here. I uh, had it shipped down from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, what's inside? Well, if you guys remember, about two months ago, uh, I was up in the Milwaukee, Chicago area for the ArnFest event, and as part of that event this year, I took advantage of being in the area to take up the bed off of my Monarch 10 E lathe to have it reground up at Kinetic, uh, which is a big grinding shop up there in the Milwaukee area. My friend Cash Masters uh, uh, helps run that organization. He's done some grinding for me in the past. He's the guy that ground in the bed and the table off of my metal planer restoration. And uh, he's also done some grinding for several other friends of mine. Excellent guy, does an awesome job of uh, machine way regrinding and so forth. He's got a guy that works for him that runs a, one of his grinders that is just an expert in that area. And uh, if you're gonna have a machine regrinding Ground. Make sure you do your research and find somebody that knows what they're doing. There's lots of grind shops out there that will take a job like that on, but if you don't have an experienced operator that really knows what they're doing, uh, they can make a mess out of it. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I've got a friend, I won't mention his name, but uh, he had a pretty bad experience with a grind shop. Uh, ended up having to do a lot of extra work uh, because he was trying to save a few bucks and uh, go with the lowest bidder rather than the most qualified one. Anyway, there's multiple guys around the country that do an excellent job on this. Uh, Cash Masters up at Kinetic has become my go-to guy on that, but I'm by no means suggesting they're the only people around that can do it. Uh, but they are someone that I can personally uh, recommend. So uh, they got it up there. I told them when I dropped it off, I was in absolutely no hurry for this at all. Uh, just to work it in when they could, uh, it took them about two months. Now I'm sure if it had been uh, more of a rush job, they could have done it faster than that. Uh, but actually I'm surprised we got it back as quick as we did because I wasn't in any kind of hurry. And uh, Cash uh, just shipped it out. He built a crate for it and put it on a, on a truck and sent it back to me rather than me having to make a trip up there to pick it back up. Uh, he got some pretty good shipping rates and uh, it was gonna be a lot cheaper just to have this thing shipped back than it was for me to try to go back up there. So today, let's unpack it, take a look at it, see what it looks like. So I've got it here over on the gantry. What I wanna do is just pick it up off the ground, put it on my saw horses and uh, take it out for no other reason uh, is I don't have to bend over. I like getting stuff up at a level where it's comfortable to work at because my old back don't bend over like it used to. Let's uh, take her for a ride. All right, we're just gonna set these down on these saw horses. These saw horses are built to hold a pretty good load. Won't have any problem holding this up at all. I've been getting lots of uh, questions and emails and comments lately about my gantry crane. And uh, I'll just tell you guys that when I bought this gantry crane, I really didn't realize how useful this thing was gonna be in my shop. Um, I knew I needed one, but uh, I can honestly tell you that there's barely a day that goes by that this thing doesn't get used. It is by far one of the most useful tools in my shop. And this gantry crane is made by Vestal. Uh, I actually purchased it off of Amazon a couple of years ago. I was gonna build one and I got to price in the steel and I got to price in you know, the components I was gonna need. And then I got to looking uh, online and dang it, I could buy one already built for and not much more than what it was gonna cost me to, to buy everything I needed to build one. And I uh, didn't have to worry about the engineering. I didn't have to worry about the time and labor involved in it. And so I just bit the bullet and bought it. Uh, I got this one off of Amazon. Uh, at the time, this has been a couple of years ago now, but at the time, because I'm a Prime member, they actually gave me free shipping on this thing, uh, which blew me away. And there's another big reason why I ended up purchasing it off of Amazon. I don't know if that deal is still going on or not. I kind of doubt it. 
I'll also know I looked the other day and uh, the price of these things have about doubled from what I paid for it uh, two or three years ago. And a lot of that has to do with the price of steel. But anyway, uh, if you don't have a gantry crane and you're dealing with heavy stuff, I highly recommend looking into getting one. And uh, I've been very, very satisfied with this one made by Vestal. And I'm sure, again, there's other companies out there that make them as well. I don't get any kickback from those these guys. Uh, I paid for this thing my own money, uh, but I am a satisfied customer. All right, let's start here by cutting the banding on this. If I can get my, there we go. When I was at the Florida Flywheelers uh, meet uh, a couple of weeks ago, I actually purchased, uh, found a guy that was selling the tools to clamp, clamp these together. and this banding material, uh, which is real handy for crates and stuff like this. And I had a set of uh, cutters that came with that little set that I got. So uh, this is actually the first time I've used them. And uh, the cutters work good. Don't know about the rest of it, but uh, at least these are working good. It's the first time I've used them. There we go. Let's see, we can knock these cleats off. Looks like they just used a staple gun to put these in. And I think this top is just sitting on here. The banding was what was holding it all together. Pull that off. Got some spacers in here. I'm gonna try to save as much of this wood as I can. Uh, that looks like some stuff that can be used for another project somewhere along the line. Staples are strong. I don't know when we'll save that border after all. Wow. with this side. I've just got a skill saw here. I've got my blade set to just the uh, depth of uh, that piece of wood up underneath it. And we're just going to go along here and zip this off. <laughs> the bottom too. That was part of what was giving me trouble. All right, I'll do the same thing on the other side. shrink wrap off of here. All right, 
let's see if we can pull this thing off. I think the last time what I did was I put a strap through this end right here like this. And then I just put this up underneath that end and then came in here with the gantry and picked it up right here. spot that it perfectly matches. This end is heavier than this end because there's just not as much in this area. That ought to be pretty good right there. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right, let's, uh, let's go over here and take a look at this grind job. All right, let's take a look at things here. First thing I'm gonna do is, I know that Cash kind of squirts these things down with uh, some uh, um, kind of an oil or protectant that kind of sticks to the metal. And what I wanna do is just uh, wipe it off. I'm just using a little bit of oil here as a solvent. Look at that. Oh yeah. This is pretty. Now when I sent this up to him, these ways were completely rusted. Um, had a layer of uh, oxidation on them but all in all they weren't in that bad of shape it wasn't like it was a pitted rust or anything like that it was just a light layer probably could have taken a stone or something and and cleaned them up but what i was more interested in is getting them running perfectly true now anytime you have a lathe you know we had that saddle that's running on it it basically runs on this uh outside way and this outside back the inside are for your tailstock to ride on, and uh, it's all needs to be perfectly in alignment. So you know these two ways, really the 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 ways that come up, the triangular ways, are the ones that need to be aligned. These flat ways are just it just sits on it and rides on both sides. But uh, he sent back some numbers where they had tested it. First off, he told me that uh, they had to take about five thousandths off in the height. And in the grand scheme of things, that's not very much at all. Uh, th that's very little for a grind job, which tells me, as I suspected, this lathe really didn't have that much wear in it to begin with. Uh, I think an argument could be made with only five thousandths wear in it that, you know, you probably could have just not done anything to this lathe bed and it would have been fine but my goal is, is to get it back to you know original condition so i wanted to get this done uh, also he checked the alignment after everything was ground uh, basically align checking the alignment between these two ways here and uh, they tested on his surface plate and everything else being um, what was it three ten thousandths of an inch so they were parallel to within three ten thousandths of an inch from you know the the highest highest spot to the lowest spot uh which honestly is about as good as you're going to get on a grinder um without any anything else so i mean i'm, I'm very excited about that that's going to be awesome uh I know someone's going to ask, 
uh, are you going to scrape this in? And the answer to that question is, is no, we will not scrape these ways in. And the reason we won't is that these ways are flame hardened. So this is a casting, uh, it is cast iron, uh, but one of the things that Monarch did was they flame hardened their ways. So uh, I don't know the exact process, but basically you could, basically in, in a nutshell, what's happened is, is they've got a case hardening on this. It's, it's going to be hard down to a couple of thousandths deep, probably 10 or 15 thousandths deep. We didn't get beneath the case hardening on this. I'm calling it case hardening. That's probably not the right term, but it gets the idea of what you've got going on here. So um, when you have hardened material, I'm not going to say you can't scrape it, but it's really difficult to scrape. Really for scraping, you need to have a soft cast iron. So no, we're not going to scrape this. We're just going to leave this like it is. And this will basically become the master that we will scrape the saddle into. The saddle ways are not hardened. Um, and, you know, I'm going to have to check it out whether I, I probably don't need to turkite it and build it up with only five thousandths being ground off. Uh, we can probably just scrape it back in and put the cast iron on cast iron back on this. Let me show you a couple other little things I'll just point out. Now if you notice down here on the end of the ways, and I'm sure some of you eagle eyes have already spotted this, we got a couple little areas that didn't quite clean up. And yes, he could have gone ahead and ground a couple more thousandths deep and got all this to clean up. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to matter. Number one, this little bit is at the very end of the lathe bed. And the times that you're going to have your saddle all the way down to the very end of the lathe bed is extremely, extremely rare because usually you're at least going to have the tail stock that's going to really prevent, you know, it's probably come up to about right in here because it will go past the tail stock. That's probably about as far back that you're ever going to take your saddle. And the other thing is, is that we've still got areas that are completely cleaned up in here. So even though we got a couple of low spots in there, we've got contact all around it. This is not a big deal. Like I said, he could have ground it all out, made it look nicer, but he would have lowered the uh, surface of these ways to, in order to do that. And uh, when you start changing the geometry, when you start dropping this down, um, that start giving you some alignment issues that you have to take into consideration to get everything raised back up again, usually putting turkite up underneath the saddle and so forth like that. Uh, no more than they took off this lathe bed. I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. That little bit of drop that we've got is so small that it's not going to matter. But if he had gotten in here and tried to clean every little thing up, you get to a point where you create some extra work someplace else. Not always a bad thing, uh, but in this case, it's just not worth it. So they didn't do that. And I'm glad it's just this way right here. Uh, there's another little spot back up underneath where the tail stock sits on. I noticed there's just a little small area in there that didn't quite clean up. But again, it's very similar to this. Um, you've still got contact where it's going to make contact. Uh, you're just not going to have 100% contact. But on the headstock end, that's really immaterial. Well, there you go. A quick sneak peek at the uh, awesome job done by uh, Cash Masters up at Kinetic up in the Milwaukee area on this lathe bed. Uh, unfortunately for me, this uh, bed is going to kind of get put to the side, at least for the time being. I've got some other projects in the shop that I've got to get worked on and finished before I start to really get into rebuilding that 10 double E. But uh, wow. Yeah, I'm really wanting to just do it now that I've got this done, but um, I'm going to have to hold off. But we will be getting into this project full force here before too much longer. And I will probably, uh, over the next month or two, be doing a few little things along and along on that uh, to kind of get it ready for, uh, for when I do get ready to start putting it back together. Uh, I've got a couple of other little things that I'll go into later that's, uh, that I need to get taken care of fairly quickly uh, because of some things we're going to be doing. And, but again, I'll go into more of that when the time comes. But anyway, I thought you guys might enjoy taking a quick look at this. And uh, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm excited. This is going to be an awesome, awesome machine. This Monarch 10 double E, uh, this was arguably one of the highest quality built metal lathes ever made. Um, there were several of these what they call tool room lathes that were made for doing extremely high-end quality work, high precision work. Um, you know, my Revet uh, that I have over there is a, is a similar 
quality machine. Some would argue that it's a little bit better than the Monarch 10 E. Some would argue that the 10 E is better. Uh, you know, there were the Hardinge, uh, what HLV, I think it is, kind of fits into that category. And there were a few others out there that were really that high-end uh, precision lathe. Uh, but the Monarch 10 E is probably the best known of those and probably the most of them that were built. Uh, but they still are fairly short supply. These things were super expensive when they were brand new. Most of them got sold to the government uh, because they're about the only people that had a budget big enough to buy them. Uh, but and regardless, I've got one and I'm excited about it and can't wait uh, to get it up and going and add it to my tools that I have available to me here in the shop. And guys, with that, uh, that's going to be a wrap on this one. Just a real quick video. I thought you guys would enjoy seeing this. And uh, anyway, we're going to sign off here. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Leave those comments down below. It really helps out. Those uh, thumbs up really help out the channel as well. And uh, hit that bell icon to get notification when new videos are posted. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.